Now I'm going to teach you guys how to mess with a comedian tonight. Because I hear you guys in line saying shit sometimes. Oh, I'm going to heckle. Go ahead. On this stage, any comedian that works here will disembowel you. <laughs> it's not a challenge. You know why? It's just our job. We, every comedian, you guys need to know this. Every comedian has 60 things in his head he's used a million times. So you're going to say something. We're going to slam you. Audience is going to laugh. We're going to move on. Then you're going to say something else. going to slam you again. And the audience going to laugh again. Except this time they're going to start to hate you just a little bit. <laughs> then... You're gonna say something else, it's gonna slam you one more time and your girlfriend's not gonna sleep with you that night. And if you're a woman heckler, your guy's gonna sleep with you, but he's not calling you the next day. <laughs> then, if you say one more thing, I'm gonna go to my ace in the hole, I'm gonna get two guys at work here that are bigger than me, they're gonna pick your ass up and drag you out while the rest of us sing We Are The World. That's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. If you've gone to a lot of comedy shows, you've seen it happen. I'm not making that up. Here's how you destroy a comedian, though. Sit right up front and never laugh one time. <laughs> the rest of the audience cheering, you never laugh. Just... <sighs> <clears throat> and every couple of minutes, shake your head just a little bit. Because what happens is comedians are very damaged, as you've already seen tonight. <laughs> and the inner retard just wakes up and starts screaming, what the hell's wrong with that guy, man? How come he's not laughing? The rest of these people are laughing. What the hell's wrong with him? You know what it is? Because they're stupid. You put the wool over their eyes. That guy, though, he's looking into your soul. <laughs> he knows that you're a liar. You need to quit this job and become a roofer. So I'm doing this show, I'm doing this show for this ladies group. And everything's going well, except for this one woman. This one woman sitting right about here, right about here. Now I'm gonna yell at you in a second, ma'am. Just so you know, I'm not yelling at you though. I'm yelling at that whore. Cause not only will this woman not laugh, she won't look at me. If I look at her, she goes, uh, and my inner retard is freaking out, man. He's like, what the hell did you do to that lady, man? All the rest of these ladies are laughing. Everybody's laughing. Why is that lady? Ooh. Maybe that's Kathleen Mason. You killed her baby. You killed her baby. You killed her baby. <laughs> and here's why I'm a loser. Here's why I'm an epic failure. Because I could have just kept doing my show. Could have kept just doing it. Audience wouldn't have known. They wouldn't have known because they were looking at the back of her head. They had no idea the one act play that was going on in my skull. I could have just done my show. Instead, here's what the audience sees. Joke, laugh, joke, laugh, joke, laugh. And then for absolutely no reason, they see me go, what the hell is your problem, lady? Are you from Louisiana? Do you speak the banjo? Well, maybe your baby deserved to die. <laughs> And this crowd just got quieter, quieter, quieter. <laughs> a dead silence. And my inner is like, I believe we're done here. <laughs> you brought in the backhoe and dug a hole, you cannot climb out of it, my friend. <laughs> it is time to say good night. And I go, good night. And it's noon. <laughs> so now I look mentally ill. I walk off stage to dead silence, nothing. I go backstage, it was a little kitchenette because it was a town auditorium. The comedian I'm working with, this guy named Carl Banks is lying on the floor in front of the stove, <laughs> curled up in a fetal position, and he is shaking with laughter. And I go, what the hell is your problem, man? He goes, <laughs> she's blind. <laughs> She had no idea! <laughs> do you feel the power to fail? <laughs> yes, you do. Mm -mm -mm. But I am not making fun of rednecks at all. Because every state has them. We've all been to Merced. 
used to be a club there, man. Merced. <laughs> called Sweet Willies. And I used to do comedy there all the time, man. And I'm going to teach you guys another way to mess with a comedian. Heckle, but don't say anything. I'm doing a show. It's, by the way, Sweet Willie's owned by a guy that couldn't afford an Applebee's franchise. <laughs> so what he had done is paint a building to look like Applebee's, went to a flea market, bought a bunch of crap, and just bolted it to the walls. <laughs> he built a piece of Crapplebee's is what he built. <laughs> so here's how you screw with a comedian. Here's another way to screw with them. Heckle, but don't say anything. I'm on sta stage one night doing this show. Show's going well. Except for this one guy. Every time he gets to the quiet part, this one guy in the back keeps doing this. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> How do I deal with the noise, right? <laughs> so I kind of move on, I ignore it, move on. Two minutes later, ho, ho, ho. So I turn around, I fire off one of the things that I have in my head that I've used for years, gonna make them look stupid. Audience laughs, we move on. Now I've been doing this a long time. Most of the time, I make someone look stupid. They are smart enough to take a long, tall drink out of a shot to fuck cup. <laughs> this guy's quiet for like 10 minutes, right? He's quiet for like 10 minutes. Everything's going, I'm doing this bit that builds to an applause. Right before I hit the last joke, ha, ha, ha and I lose it. I go, dude, what do you do for a living? He goes, I'm in the Air Force. I said, why, you couldn't get into a real college? <laughs> oh yeah. See, but at the time, it was the perfect thing to say. This audience went nuts. They were like, yeah! So I took a bow, and I took another bow, and when I turned back, the dude is on stage <laughs> next to me. I'm 6'2", he's 6'5", he's wearing a cowboy hat, and the ceiling fan's clicking the feather. <laughs> And I realized, hey, you're gonna get your ass kicked in front of 300 people. <laughs> hey, make sure you keep it funny. <laughs> and here's how great you guys are when you get together. In desperation, I turn to the crowd and go, if this guy touches me, how many of you guys are gonna kick his ass? And the whole crowd went, yeah! <laughs> and I went, eat me. <laughs> He sat his country ass down. <laughs> Beat the hell out of me in the parking lot after that show. Uh-huh, because I made a big mistake. I had a glass of wine with the owner of the club. I got paid. Everybody's left, right? I go out to the parking lot. I'm putting my key in my car, and I hear, so, you don't like the Air Force, huh, faggot? <laughs> well, now I'm frightened and morally offended. <laughs> Deuce of Ex Machina? How do you pronounce that? Ex Machina. Deuce. Ex Machina. Deuce Ex Machina. So, oh, hey, no. I like that better. By the way, that's my company. I'm actually Douche Ex Machina. That's going to be. Oh, Dan's no. Ex Machina. 